Hello people and welcome to the channel. Yes, it's here. Oh yeah. By popular demand, the Jim Kelly tribute. Round one. Hi. <laughs> He's got style. He's cool. He was one of the first black martial artists of the 1970s. He was one of the first black action heroes. Tonight, we're going to look at his life, his achievements, and some tributes on the web. A group of people that stood out for their style, a people of ethnic origin, is the fro. That's right. Forget today's style. You've got the grooming, you've got the beards, you've got the, the braids, but the fro was in, in the 70s. And whether it was Earth, Wind and Fire, the Jackson Fives, and Jim Kelly and the Dragon, known for his notorious fro. By today's standards, that may appear to be unusual, but back then, it was an identity. And Jim Kelly, I would say is probably the coolest, most trendiest actor in Enter the Dragon. Born on the 5th of May, 1946. He began his athletic career at Bourbon Country High School in Paris, Kentucky, competing in basketball, football, track and field. He attended University of Louisville on a football scholarship that left his freshman year after a coach referred to a black teammate with a racial slur. Instead, he began to study Shorin Ryu Karate, Shaolin Do, in Lexicon, Kentucky. He trained in Okinawa. During the 19, early 70s, Kelly became one of the most decorated world karate championships in the sport. In 1971, he won four prestigious championships that same year, most no notably the World Middleweight Karate title at the 1971 Long Beach International Karate Championships. Jim Kelly had many dojo students, and one of his students later introduced him to Calvin Lockhart. And through Calvin, Jim was able to meet other Hollywood producers and directors. Jim Kelly's first film was Melinda. Enter the Dragon was a film that took him to stardom in the 1970s, starring an all-star cast, uh, of which um, it is one to be remembered. It is defeat that you must learn to prepare for. Here's what Jim Kelly had to say about his time on Enter the Dragon. So I didn't get a chance to train with him, but I would have. How have things changed? I got a chance to train. I, I said I didn't get a chance to train with him. I didn't get a chance to train at that time. Yeah. But on the set, in between shoots, and uh, we, we trained quite a bit together. Obvious. What was it like working with him on the set? And did you know the Enter the Dragon would become the legendary film that it is? I mean, just so amazing, you know. No, we didn't know. We just we were just trying to make a great film, a good film, a very good film. Mm -hmm. How did it change my life? It put me on the map. We are all ready to win, just as we are born knowing only life. It is defeat that you must learn to prepare for. I don't waste my time with it. When it comes, I won't even notice. Oh, how so? I'll be too busy looking good. What were you looking for when you attacked my guards? You will tell me who else. You come right out of a comic book. Been practicing. Yeah. Enter the Dragon was made in 1973. By today's standards, there has never been a film that will rival Enter the Dragon. It wasn't about special effects. It wasn't about a green screen. 
it wasn't about all the things that they now include in today's movies that was absent back in the 70s. It was all about storytelling, character arcs, and you wanting your, the characters to survive. Thanks to Bruce Lee, who um, includes Jim Kelly on this, on this movie, it changed the game for black action heroes. <laughs> And what's really nice about this film is um, each of the characters have their own distinct sounds. Especially when Bruce Lee fights, we know what he, he sounds like when he's he's in action. Aka! And Mr. Williams, go! And the exertion to uh, exert yourself um, in hitting your foe or defending yourself. It's literally a way of saying, this is who I am. This is my identity. When I exert myself, this is how it sounds. We know that the, the, the sounds of punches, contact, it can never be like that in real life. Operatic cinematic drama for the, for the eyes and for the ears. Um, great film and a great villain. A villain of which by today's standards, I don't think we've had um, other villains that have come across as menacing as Han. He really was out of a comic book and uh, in every sense of the word his hair his style even the sounds he makes when he's getting beat but he was one who had a few tricks up his sleeve but there's something about enter the dragon in the time that it was made ahead of its time including characters that are not seen on screen compared to films that preceded that i think jackie chan came close to it in armor of god because we then we had four black women um, so it was progression and that progression again came from outside not from within the industry norms but it came from outside the industry and that amongst all the featured actors in that film he was killed off way too early so uh, this film has got to go down as one of the best if not the all-time martial arts film. and that opened the door for Jim Kelly to star in many other roles both sharing a success together in terms of being able to capitalize on that film, especially for Jim Kelly, who was able to then um, be signed up for three other deals with Warner Brothers. The black exploitation movement was a, a, a movement of independent films made by black crew for black audiences. And this independent movement was in particularly important to black people in the 1970s. It was a way of which black people could go to the cinema and watch films that relate to their own identity and culture. And if you think about it, today we have quite a few black films that are made, but in that time where cinema was booming, nevertheless, there are very few films that featured around black individuals on black culture. So this is very important. And for Jim Kelly to be in the middle of this movement, quite a significant and a privileged position to, to be able to model how you're perceived and what you would like to portray to the public. Gave him more integrity and more status as a role model. Here's a collection of films that Jim Kelly has been featured in. I've got to say that for Jim Kelly, he was one of the first black action heroes. And he understood the challenges within Hollywood that 
uh, it was very difficult for a black man to become a superstar, knowing that the nar narrative of where the money was going and investing in films was for either white males or white male lookalikes leaning towards Chinese. Here's what Jim Kelly had to say about his discussions and experience with Bruce Lee. We didn't know. Um, what do you remember most about Bruce Lee? That we had similar struggles as a minority. Mm -hmm. Myself as a black man and Bruce as a ch Chinese. Uh, the uh, script, uh, not the script, but the uh, TV series, uh, what was name? Kung Fu, that David Carradine started. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to David Carradine, but that series was written for Bruce Lee. The writer wrote it for Bruce Lee. And he went to Bruce and said, look, here it is, read it, tell me if you like it. If you like it, no problem. We'll get it, we'll get it done. So Bruce read the script, called the guy up, said, hey, man, I love it, I want to do it. So okay, no problem, Bruce. We'll, I'll go get the money. So he went to the major studios. The studios loved the project, said, hey, everything's good. But we just can't have a Chinese guy to star in America. So we got to get a white guy and make him look half Chinese. So, but we don't want Bruce because he's Chinese. We can't write, we can't, we don't want to protect the Chinese guy. Even though he's the guy that has the expertise and the talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was written for him. It was written for him. Both individuals were struggling to break into the US market. Bruce Lee had dominated the Asian market and yet they were putting hurdles and barriers so that people wouldn't look to other national ethnic groups outside of the norm as heroes. And for this reason, there are many roles that Jim was offered to which he turned down because he didn't like the way that the producers from outside wanted to portray black males. Black males should be role models and also should portray a positive image, but that's not what Hollywood wanted to portray at the time. And Jim Kelly has voiced and expressed this on numerous occasions uh, of which I think to his credit gave him more integrity and more status as a role model. When we look at these two actors we can see friendship, we can see bond, we can see similarities and common grounds of struggles. There are some unique moments. Bruce Lee actually admitted to Jim Kelly that he had the one of the fastest backhand strikes he's ever seen. And when he asked Jim Kelly, where did he learn that backhand strike? He told him he learned it from Gordon Dovasola. It was only then that Bruce Lee admitted that he had actually taken lessons from Gordon Dovasola. So they both shared a strike in common. After this video, you can watch my commentary on Armor of God, starring Jackie Chan, that featured four black women in the 1980s. The first four black women to star alongside an international star who excelled in their field of martial arts. You can see that here or in the description. Just to think that Jim Kelly was the first in the 70s. 10 years later, we have four black women who, are, who excelled in their field. We can see the ripple effect of inspiration. And that's what these actors and Jim Kelly wanted to do is to inspire. Here are some other tributes we found on the web. During the campaign for this project that we are building behind the scenes, there was a question that was put in the comment section of video 33. And the, the, the question was, can you name other martial arts movies that Jim Kelly has been featured in? 
And out of the 40 comments, there was only one comment that answered one of the films that Jim Kelly has starred in. And that was by a big shout out to Brendan, who was able to name The Tattoo Connection. For The Tattoo Connection is one of the films that Jim Kelly starred in, a great film. And a uh, big shout out to you, my friend. Something's coming your way. It's going to be up on the board pretty soon. Any of you want to know more about this project, just got to watch some of the other clips that feature my face or the other campaign videos. So, Jim Kelly, the superstar, the action hero, the father, and not only was he a martial artist, he also played tennis as well. He truly was a badass off screen and on screen. Guys, Hope you liked the video. Please leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Tonight we're going to look at the life of Jim Kelly. Very quiet, Jet. Tonight we're going to look at the life of Jim Jet. Jet. Shh. Tonight. Tonight. We're going to look at the life of Jim Kelly, his highlights, his achievements, and some tributes on the web. I think that's a take.